Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday, April 19th. Today is the first Sunday after Easter, and welcome to St. Luke's in our online service today. Rise, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Something deep inside us calls us. It beckons us. We are looking for truth that anchors us in the midst of competing voices. We are searching for life that sparkles with joy and glows with warmth. We are finding our way to Christ, to community, to love. And we are bold to sing a resurrection song, for He is risen. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-9. through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Today's gospel is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he had said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach your hand out and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Today's children's message, we're going to talk about wondering, doubt, mystery. And to do that, I'm going to reference um, some candy today. Uh, so if you've ever seen this or other ones, Airheads has mystery flavors, uh, Fun Dip here, um, the Dum Dum Suckers, they have mystery flavors. And if you've ever had uh, one of these, there's something about it. I, for me personally, if I get one of the mystery flavors of the suckers, I always get excited about it. But I also start thinking through which one of the flavors do I really not want and what am I actually hoping for? And so there's some questions, some wondering that happens, but there's also excitement. And that's the beauty of today. I'll give you a little secret. I personally actually don't like that we always call Thomas Doubting Thomas because I think it kind of gives him a bad name. I think the reality is, is we always have questions and wonder about things. And I think you can actually sense that Thomas is actually excited. The mystery of, is this actually Jesus, is exciting to him. And Jesus tells us and tells him and tells us every day, I am here. And so whatever that mystery is, whatever those questions are, know that Jesus says, I am here with you in those questions and in the answers. So go out, live into the mystery of Jesus' love. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, who is the risen Christ. Amen. Before I begin my message this morning, I would like to share a thank you uh, to all of the family and the friends of St. Luke's. As you all are pretty much aware, I've not been here that long, but it has been a joy for me to see the vibrancy of the ministries that continue to be happening here in our midst. Uh, as I have a chance to experience some of those, actually get to know some of those ministries, I'm impressed with the work that continues to happen, particularly at this unprecedented time. And so I just say thank you to you. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for what you do so that this ministry can continue and actually grow in this, time, in this period of time. There are two sentences and two statements that I would like to focus on this morning. And the first is the statement of our Lord when he comes into the disciples and he says to them, peace be with you. And the second is one that some of you might be familiar with. It comes from a person called Ram Das, who is a, an American author. He is a psychologist. He is a spiritual teacher. And he shared the message, uh, we are all just walking each other home. First of all, we focus on the message of the disciples. The disciples were in a toxic environment. They were afraid. They were looking and looking out for themselves because of the fear of their fellow Jewish members. They had just experienced the death of their Lord and they were associated with him 
And as we had heard during the Lenten season, particularly Holy Week, they were all under, they were suspect and they were under pressure to protect themselves. Well, they're in this hostile and toxic environment and they find themselves wanting to seclude themselves behind locked doors. And that's where we find him in our text this morning, that that's where they were hiding because of their fear, hiding because of their depression. They had just lost a good friend through death. And even though the, the mixed message that they got from the women that he was raised from the dead, that had not all sunk into them as yet. And so in this state of uncertainty or confusion or whatever it is that they were experiencing, we find them behind locked doors. And through those locked doors, then Jesus comes and he shares this very short message with them. And he says, peace be with you. Well, initially, they saw their good friend, and as you would do also, and I would do, as we see a good friend coming to us, we want to greet them, and we, and we are very happy to see them. Well, they did this, and then they also shared that as they experienced his presence with them, they began to, began to think about how this might change who they were and what was happening to them. But you know the reality of it, Jesus coming and sharing peace be with you, with them, really did not change anything, but in the end it changed everything. And what do I mean by that? Jesus came and said, peace be with you. That did not stop the Jewish rabble or the Jewish group or whoever it was, or the Romans for that matter, whoever it was that had taken opposition to the disciples, it did not stop that opposition from happening. Jesus' simple statement, peace be with you, did not stop the disciples from being afraid. The fact that he had shared that short sentence, peace be with you, did not necessarily stop their confusion. Fact is, it might have even uh, enlightened it or strengthened it or made it increase. Jesus' peace that he had come to give to them was a peace that seemingly did not change anything, but changed everything because as they began to realize the peace that he was offering, they realized that this was a peace that would surpass human understanding. It was not just becoming at peace with their environment or with their emotional state or whatever, but it was a peace that would be coming to them and sharing with them a powerful message a powerful message that the world could not give to them and nor could they give to each other. And that is that the God who had raised Jesus from the dead was the God who would let nothing separate his creation and his creatures from him. That neither the death that they had experienced and, and were a part of on Good Friday, neither that nor the confusion nor the turmoil nor the difficulty, none of these things were going to be able to separate them from the love of God which was with them through their Lord. So that peace that he was sharing with them was not a magic bullet. It was not a magic trick of some sort. It was not a get out of jail free card. It was not something that changed things automatically. And yet it gave to them a defiant hope, a hope that said in the midst of all things, God will yet reign. Well, you and I, as you can sense, are, have a lot of similarities with those early disciples today as we are continuing to experience and wisely so experiencing the safer at home practices that have us shut up within our homes, have us behind, perhaps not locked doors, but behind doors. Well, it's into that door that our Lord comes as well and says, peace be with you. 
And again, it's not the peace that is going to have the coronavirus be gone tomorrow. It's not the peace that is going to make all things new immediately. But it is that confident and that quiet peace that is going to be able to give us strength and ability to stand in spite of all of the things that are happening to us. And the coronavirus is what we are focusing on now. But as I well know and as you well know, it does, it does not include all things. There are many other things that are happening that are troubling us just as much. The other diseases that we might be experiencing, the loss of connecting with good friends and good people and family members at this particular time, the loss of, of physical work, the loss of, of paychecks, all of these things are, are giving us the difficulty and inability to look with a lot of hope toward the future. It creates fear within us. Well, to all of these things, our Lord comes to us today and says, peace be with you. And again, I say, that this is not a, some sort of magic trick. It's not so, some sort of a statement that says, well, there, now all things are better. But it, like the disciples, it's that quiet confidence that in spite of everything they are seeing around them, they know that they are saved, that they are the ones that are protected. And their defiant hope is that the Christ who has promised to make all things new will make them new. And so as we know, at least through legend, that the disciples who may have been in that crowded room and hiding came out. And for the rest of their life, they shared the message that Christ is risen and he is risen indeed. And that takes us to our second statement, and that is we are all just walking each other home. Well, as we think about that statement, the strength that we have to give to one another is to continue to walk with each other in whatever way we can. With our nuclear family, those living within our homes, we are in physical contact or connection with one another but through other means, and we are discovering many of those means as we continue to experience this unprecedented time, through other means, we are connecting with each other, and as we are walking with each other, either physically or virtually, we do have a message to share with one another. And that message is that Christ is risen and he is risen indeed, and he has spoken to us that powerful message that says, peace be with you. The disciples did not stay locked up in that room forever, we know that. And nor will we be safer at home forever. We all have questions about when this might be released or how it's gonna happen as we move back into our future. But as we experience that, we have one task, we have one job, and that is to walk each other home. My prayer this morning is that we can be alive to the needs that we have. And even though we are challenged with how we will connect with one another, our task is to share with each other that defiant, confident hope that the disciples had when they first heard the message, peace be with you, that we have that same courage and that same defiant hope to look at each other and actually make the promise to each other, I will walk home with you. As we do that, we not only lift the cares and concerns that we might have, but we, in whatever way that is possible for us, we carry each other's burdens. We share the, the depth of confusion or sorrow or whatever it might be. We share that with one another. 
So the disciples said eventually within their lives, and they all proved it by how they carried out the rest of their lives, they said confidently to one another, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. And may you and I, as we are now walking each other home, may you and I also look at each other and say in the same breath with the same exuberance, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia, amen. of a rising Christ on the roadway unknown companion walks with his own when they invite him as fades the first day and bread is broken Christ is made known when we are walking doubtful and dreading blinded by sadness slowness of heart Yet Christ walks with us, ever awaiting our invitations day, do not part. Christ our companion, hope for the journey, bread of compassion, open our eyes. Grant us your vision, set all hearts burning, that all creation with you may arise. of arise, Christ on the roadway, unknown companion walks with his own. When they invite him, as fades the first day, and bread is broken, Christ is made known. A blessed Easter to you all, the second Sunday of Easter. We are glad to be able to share our Easter celebration for the second time online today. And we look forward to having a fuller celebration when we return from our safer at home regulations. Daily Inspiration is available with new devotions written by staff and some other members several times a week. We've received very good comments on our presence online, and we welcome your feedback as well. A new survey asking for your response will be going out this week. The new Friendship or Love Boats program has begun to be implemented. It is a connection through the phone for our senior members. Please follow guidelines given to all, but call the church or Paul Harshner if you need help. We do essential business at the church building each day, now available by phone from 8.30 to 3.30, Monday through Friday. We invite you, members and friends, to remember the church in a regular way during this time. If you are to give financial support, you have a lot of choices for that, automated giving, envelopes, or secure giving. And please think about the broader offering that you will give to God this week, whether it be financial or through worship, prayer, or other means. We have a very special segment during the announcements today. We want to introduce Jay Keel as a new children, youth, and family minister at St. Luke's. Well, Jay, congratulations on the new title and position. Pastor Roger, thank you. I'm excited to continue the work of youth ministry and also uh, this new role for children and families as well. And I just want to thank uh, you and the council for the opportunity to, to look into this and excited about what the future holds. Now, you have been the youth director or minister at St. Luke's for several years. I'm not sure exactly how many. Uh, so uh, why are you interested in expanding uh, your position? Yeah, for the sake of the church, I would say it's what I had just said earlier, that um, more cohesive and I think energy it just continues to grow here. And um, I'm excited to be a part of that and help uh, with some leadership of that energy and work alongside others in that. And then on a personal level, I'm, I'm excited for 
uh, the new growth of leadership and new ways to um, study about the church and, and how minister with and through and, and at the church. The plan for the future is that we would have a children's coordinator, an early childhood coordinator, and I would still continue to work with the youth as my main focus with the confirmation middle school and high school. And then we would have ministry teams for each of those three areas as well with members from the church being invited to be a part of that leadership and uh, look into the future for each ministry area. Well, we look forward to all the great things you will do uh, alongside of uh, other people. And as we, as Jay begins his position, we want to give a shout out to Michelle Stanley, who has been the children's ministry coordinator, uh, working mostly with Sunday School at St. Luke's during the past year or so. And she'll be concluding her, her staff work. She still uh, will remain a very active volunteer, uh, we hope. Thank you, Michelle, for your special contribution to the lives of children at St. Luke's uh, during the past year. Just again, thank you to you and the council and the congregation for this opportunity. And I wanna follow up too with Michelle and thank her personally as well. She was uh, very helpful in thinking through this new plan uh, with, with council as well and um, has already offered uh, so much resource and, and help in this too. And I'm so thankful for, for her continued ministry in this way. Well, great day. We look forward to great things. Thank you, me too. Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you led the disciples to open the locked doors to let the resurrected Jesus in. Open the doors we close when we fear others. Make us more open to those who worship you in different ways. Lead St. Luke's to continue to be good neighbors and examples to all around us. Guide our call committee in their search for a new senior pastor. Increase in us the spirit of faith and love as we are an example to all believers and to our larger community. Be with leaders in the United States and around the world. Give wisdom to decision makers who inform and lead during this time of social isolation. Open our, our minds and hearts to our common humanity. Hear the cries of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those in greatest need whom we name silently before you. We pray especially for those who are suffering from COVID-19, new anxiety over an uncertain future, and from social isolation or loneliness. Be with those who are unemployed and give them faith in the future. Bless healthcare workers with the knowledge and conviction of their call to serve you at all times. Guide the human family in ways of mercy and justice. We lift up all of our members today, but especially these, Bill and Kathy Martin, Butch Martin, Alejandro Martinez and Jessica Wieselman and Sophia Martinez, Marilyn Mason, Sasha and Gianna Mason, Mike Matthews and Sarah Smith, and Chuck and Helen Malbitch. Comfort all who have lost loved ones. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.